bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and so worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Be gracious to your people, we entreat you, O Lord, that they, repenting day by day of the things that displease you, may be more and more filled with love of you and of your commandments, and being supported by your grace in this life, may come to full enjoyment of eternal life in your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson to, for us today comes to us from Susanna. There was a man living in Babylon whose name was Joachim. He married the daughter of Hilkiah named Susanna, a very beautiful woman who was one feared, who feared the Lord. Her parents were righteous and had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and had a fine garden adjoining his house. And the Jews used to come to him because he was the most honored of them all. Now that year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them, the Lord had said, Wickedness came forth from Babylon from elders who were judges, who were supposed to govern the people. These men were frequently at Joachim's house, and all who had a case to be tried came there to them. And when the people left at noon, Susanna would go into her husband's garden to walk. Every day, the two elders used to see her going in and walking about, and they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences and turned away their eyes from looking up to heaven or remembering their duty to administer justice. Once, while they were watching for an opportune day, she went in as before with only two maids and wished to bathe in the garden, for it was a very hot day. No one was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves and were watching her. She said to their, her maids, Bring me olive oil and ointments and shut the garden doors so that I can bathe. They did as she told them. They shut the doors of the garden and went out by the side doors to bring what they had been commanded. They did not see the elders because they were hiding. Now, when the maids had gone out, the two elders got up and ran to her. They said, look, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. We are burning with desire for you. So give your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you. And that is why you sent your maids away. Susanna groaned and said, I am completely trapped. For if I do this, it will mean death for me. If I do not, I cannot escape your hands. I choose not to do it, and I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and the two elders shouted against her. And one of them ran and opened the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the shouting in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. And when the elders told their story, the servants felt very much ashamed, for nothing like this had ever been said about Susanna. Now the next day, 
When the people gathered at the house of her husband Joachim, the two elders came full of their wicked plot to have Susanna put to death. Now in the presence of the people, they said, Send for Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. Then the two elders stood up before the people and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears, she looked up to heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. And the elders said, While we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the doors, and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who was hiding there came to her and lay with her. We were in a corner of the garden, and when we saw this wickedness, we ran to them. Although we saw them embracing, we could not hold the man, because he was stronger than we are, and opened the doors and ran away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked, Who is the young man? But she would not tell us. To these things we testify. And because they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned Susanna to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice again and said, O eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false evidence against me, and now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cry, and just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. And all the people turned to him and asked, What is this you are saying? Now taking his stand among them, he said, Are you such fools, O Israelites, as to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination and without learning the facts? Return to court, for these men have given false evidence against her. So all the people hurried back, and the rest of the elders said to him, Come, sit among us and inform us, for God has given you the standing of an elder. And Daniel said to them, Separate them far from each other, and I will examine them. And when they were separated from each other, he summoned one of them and said to him, You old relic of wicked days, your sins have now come home, which you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent, and acquitting the guilty. Though the Lord said, You shall not put an innocent and righteous person to death. Now then, if you really saw this woman, tell me this. Under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? And he answered, under the mastic tree. And Daniel said, very well, this lie has cost you your head. For the angel of God has received the sentence from God and will immediately cut you in two. Then putting him to one side, he ordered them to bring in the other. And he said to him, you offspring of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty has beguiled you and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you have been treating the daughters of Israel, and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree do you catch them being intimate with each other? And he answered, Why, under an evergreen oak. Daniel said to him, Very well. This lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you in two, so as to destroy you both. Then the whole assembly raised a great shout and blessed God, who saves those who hope in him. And they took action against the two elders, because out of their own mouths Daniel had convicted them of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor. Acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. Thus, innocent blood was spared that day. Here ends the lesson. Our response to the lesson today comes to us in Psalm 23. Psalm 23 begins on page 612 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will use it and recite it in unison. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. For though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early in the morning, Jesus came again to the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman in who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before them all, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. What do you say? And they said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone against her. At once he bent back down and wrote on the ground again. And when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing there before him. Jesus straightened up, and he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And so Jesus said to her, Well, neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Here ends the lesson. These rather dramatic passages can reveal secret moments perhaps in our own lives, in our own experience. For example, when we are suspected of evil but are helpless to say anything to defend ourselves or to properly explain what's going on. In other moments, we may even be guilty, as was the woman in today's Gospel lesson, but never allowed to forget it by our accusers. There are still other moments when we are convinced before God about the goodness of some other person and yet remain incapable of expressing ourselves adequately before an otherwise skeptical crowd. The key to surviving these situations, these moments in our lives, lies in one of the lines uttered by Susanna in the first lesson. Through her tears she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. She trusted in the Lord with her whole heart. That is the key. Now, contrast that with the way the two men actually conducted themselves. The scripture says clearly they suppressed their consciences. They knew in their hearts what they were doing was wrong, but they, they suppressed it. They wouldn't listen to that tiny little voice that's inside all of us saying, this is not the way to go. And yet, they would even not even allow their eyes to look up to heaven. For perhaps, in looking up to heaven, to God, that instruction that their conscience was giving them might overwhelm them and they'd be frustrated in their plan. We must fix our gaze on heaven always, as did Susanna, and allow ourselves to be wholly absorbed in the life of God 
And it is in this union between God and ourselves that we find the strength and the peace that is necessary to endure such moments in life. This is the kind of peace that Jesus gives to his disciples when he speaks to them at the Last Supper, when he says to them, peace I give you, peace is my farewell gift to you. It is not given as the world gives peace because this kind of peace flows deeply into our lives and gives us that intimacy with God that no one can take away from us. One of the things this kind of peace gives to us is a spirit of patience. Now very often we think of patience as simply waiting and certainly now in these days we are all about waiting. Waiting for the day when we can resume our normal activities. Waiting for the day when we can once again go and visit our friends and our neighbors. Waiting for the day when we can simply just go back to work and do what we love to do. Patience in this sense is not only about waiting. It is the kind of thing that says to us in our waiting, there is peace. There is a verse in Latin in the very old liturgy of the church, in patientia vestra, possidebitis animas vestra. In other words, it says, in your patience, you will possess your soul. That's what's really said to us in the Gospel of Luke in the 21st chapter, that we will possess our soul, that in that waiting, we become more keenly aware of who we are. We become more keenly aware of our direct relationship with God, and we begin to realize that no enemy, nothing around us, not even death itself, as the power to overwhelm us and to incapacitate us. Susanna could have lashed out angrily against her accusers. She could have panicked and ran around and tried to tell everybody that she was really innocent. But she didn't do that. She simply looked to the Lord, for her trust was in God. It is this sense of self-possession that gives us that peace, even in the midst of such anxiety and turmoil in our lives, even as we experience a day. And so as we go through our day today, let us recall these two women, one unjustly accused and another perhaps justly accused, but forgiven, and realize that that's our stance with God, that when we are innocent, God will protect us. And when we are accused and we are guilty, it is in God that we can find forgiveness and peace within our own soul. It's what leads us into that 23rd Psalm, that beautiful Psalm that we say so often. Your rod and your staff, they give me comfort. Let us take comfort in the presence of God. In his ever abiding presence with his rod and his staff, knowing that no matter what comes across us or what we will confront, if we trust in the Lord daily, intimately, moment by moment, we will find the peace that we need. And so my friends, confident of God's love for us, let us profess our faith together by saying, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so with great confidence in God's love for us, we now pray for the whole state of Christ Church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth and unity and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and so live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially our own Bishop Kevin, and those who seek to serve the church in this time of trouble that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, this, this parish, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, and Tom, our governor, and those who advise them during this health crisis, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and the peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear especially those who have succumbed to the coronavirus, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Mary, St. Luke, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. And grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We hear in the news broadcasts, we also hear that the rate of infection continues to go up and increasing numbers of people are sick. So let us add special prayers for the sick this day, remembering especially those who are being humbled by this virus. O Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, we humbly beseech thee to behold, visit, and relieve thy sick servants for whom our prayers are now desired. Look upon them with the eyes of thy mercy. Comfort them with a sense of thy goodness. Preserve them from the temptations of the enemy and give them patience in their afflictions. In thy good time, restore them to health and enable them to lead the residue of their lives in thy faith and fear and to thy glory and grant that finally they may dwell with thee in everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So my friends, let us ourselves humbly confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart, 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, now have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and so bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the word of God to all those who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. For all things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, who dost bid thy faithful people to cleanse their hearts and now to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by thy word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of grace which thou hast prepared for those who love thee. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy most tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial which thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks, for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless 
and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. For now the gifts of God are given for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and thus to assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ to love and to serve the Lord.